Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EduSite Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in Sustainable Development Goals, we will be talking about poverty and livelihood. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is Professor in Department of Geography in the Ellis School of Economics, University of Delhi. He is also Vice President of International Geographical Union. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you Amritji, dear viewers. Today we are going to discuss end poverty and livelihood security. Poverty eradication continues to be the very important challenge for sustainable development. And livelihood security is one of the important means for achieving poverty eradication. So I would like to discuss this. Initially I would like to highlight end poverty for sustainable development and I would like to take up compare situation of India in global context. Now you can see through this diagram our situation is better than Chad, Madagascar, Zambia, Haiti, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Ghana, Kenya, particularly uh, considering the poverty rate. But our situation is bad than the China or Brazil. These two are the important BRIC nations. I would like to put before you here the two important diagrams. First, I would like to show that, you know, if you will consider the contribution to real global GDP growth, emerging mar markets, you know, in recent years declined very substantially. But when you will consider developing a developed uh, 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 market, particularly the then you can find that the uh, after the 2010 you know decline to 2013 but again little bit growth 2016 particularly i would like to highlight the gdp growth forecast and if you will see that emerging markets like you know india china uh, Indonesia, South Korea, these are the country, Mexico City, Mexico actually, these are having a very high GDP growth forecast in comparison, to, uh, comparison of country like, you know, uh, Brazil, Russia, Italy, France, Japan. I would like to take up this more, you know, uh, micro level and take case study from BRIC nation. Now you can see GDP percentage change on a year earlier. So China almost less than 7.5 percent. Uh, India our forecast is little higher than, uh, uh, than China, very higher from the South Africa, Brazil and Russia. Russia, you know, uh, going in a very ne negative way, Brazil, these two BRIC nations are getting. Our situation is uh, even better than the, since last one year, better than China. Now I would like to put before you India a state of poverty and development. And for that, I would like to take up the carrying capacity consideration. You can see this India having population of uh, total geographical area of 2.4 percent, accommodating 17.5 percent of the world human population 
and almost 17.5 percent of the world cattle population. Po poverty continues to be the very important challenge, almost 30 percent population lives in poverty. Housing, 20 percent of population without proper housing, these are the very important characteristics of poverty. Electricity, 25 percent without any electricity. Per capita consumption is only one tenth of the developed world. If you will see drinking water, 92 million be, uh, people are without having any safe drinking water. Human development index, you know, global rank is very low, you know, more than 100. And so that is why our top priority should be poverty eradication and sustaining growth. For achieving poverty eradication and sustaining growth, livelihood security is very important. And through livelihoods, providing the livelihood security to the people at the all the time, all the places, it is possible to achieve poverty eradication. Now through this, this diagram, I would like to highlight two very important components rural poor and the urban poor. You can see that rural poor almost 23.37 percent, urban 6.40 percent, rural non-poor if you will see 46.09 percent and urban non-poor 24.10 percent. But if you will see last few years trend then poverty ratio has declined. Rural area as well as in urban areas. Now you can see almost 25.7 percent rural poverty, urban area 13.7 percent. I would like to examine you know two maps of India are given here and you can understand from your own perception that we have less poverty in some southern states like Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, uh, uh, even Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, these are the states you know the western side uh, less poverty ratio. If you will consider the per capita income I think the Punjab, Haryana these two states are also having very high per per capita in income. They also have a, uh, a very substantial area under irrigation. So one can see a very close relationship, positive relationship between irrigation, water availability and poverty decline. Coming to urban you know, poverty ratio, um, still we have a very high poverty in uh, um, northern states like Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and less urban poverty is still uh, in Maharashtra, Gujarat, uh, Rajasthan and some uh, West Bengal also, some part of West Bengal, even in uh, uh, Uttarakhand also having a less urban poverty. But you know here I would like to put before you the major you know healthy sign emerging in our country and if you take case of uh, few important states like Bihar you know rural poverty decline almost 28.60 percent, Madhya Pradesh 18 percent almost, Odisha 25 percent having a highest decline, uh, less decline in Uttar Pradesh like 12 percent. Uh, coming to uh, urban poverty, we have decline, uh, highest decline in Odisha, uh, Rajasthan and less decline again in uh, Uttar Pradesh. But you know if you will see uh, per capita consumption expenditure 
increased substantially in recent years. If you compare from 1993-94 to 2005, this can be divided into the two categories, 93-94 to 2004-5. You can say the pre-liberalization period and 2004-5 to 11-12, that may be considered as a uh, uh, you know, post, you know, uh, later stage of uh, liberalization and globalization and more impact of FDI trade, very high trade ratio, you know, you can find and impact can be visible here. You can see this, the how high consumption increased very substantially during 2004-5 to 11-12, both in rural area and urban area. Even rural area having the more, you know, uh, per capita consumption. It is very important to relate globalization with poverty. Globalization used to bring mobility in labor, mobility in people, bringing economic growth, increasing material consumption, private privatization and commodification of public services, national and global uh, commons, corporate deregulations was achieved, increased corporate concentration, but such concentrations are found only in a few pockets, few area and cultural and economic homogenization achieved. FDI, I would like to take few important indicators and first I would like to take up FDI, uh, foreign direct investment as a catalyst of economic growth. Economic growth is uh, conventionally measured as the percentage increase in gross GDP or GNP. Economic growth comes in two forms. An economy can either grow extensively by using more resources such as physical, human and natural capital or intensively by using the same amount of resources more efficiently. When economic growth is achieved by using more labor, it does not result in per capita income growth. But when economic growth is achieved through more productive use of all resources, so here including labor, it results in higher per capita income and improvement in a standard of living. So, our objective should be for more productive use of all resources. The fund expenditure, government expenditure should come more on the productive system rather than welfare schemes. Country like India, welfare schemes are also needed because since centuries people have been you know depressed and for such section you know uh, economically weaker section socio uh, socially deprived weaker section it is possible to introduce some welfare measure, measures and welfare schemes but emphasis should be given for more and more productive use of resources and then we can have the impact of globalization for achieving ecological sustainability because sustainable development, ecological component is one of the very important requirement. Distribution of wealth and income, people should get the growth and justice. No doubt, if you will see the data coming after post-independence periods, we achieved very substantially on different front even on agriculture, manufacturing, on industrial production, but growth with equity is very important requirement. Economic output is important for making economic stability, allocation of scarce resources towards an improved quality of life for all the people and all the places. So, regional differences, I think we have to remove through poverty eradication. But if you see the India's foreign trade, that is a very important aspect of economic development. 
and if you will consider uh, uh, for last you know a few years 10, 11 to 13, 14 I would like to give you the figure. We have a big gap trade deficit exists you know between export and import. We have more import in comparison to the export. This such unbalanced pattern we have to you know mitigate and this is possible when we can bring massive economic activity, income and employment generating activity in different part of the country. You know every region should participate in poverty eradication through creating livelihood assets based on local knowledge, resources, talents, materials available in different part of the country. Now I would like to give you uh, uh, imported and exported commodity and then you will be able to understand where we can have the more you know a scope for expansion. If you will see the India's top exports we have uh, some a small you know petro products, transport parts, machinery, pharmaceutical, metal, fabrics, electronic, plastic you know. But when you will see the import we have crude oil this is a very very important and so for eradication of poverty I think this aspect we have to how we can have we should have our own resources the crude oil you know electronics still we sophisticated some items the coal uh, gold jewelry machinery chemical plastics coal transport equipments edible oils these are almost we are importing so i think we have to identify prioritize where we can do more import and particularly we have to see country wise import and export then we will be able to understand from uh, you know uh, regional perspective where we can have the more and where what type of demand we have. If you see uh, top export destination you know USA, UAE, Hong Kong, Singapore these are the more important country you know where we are having the more uh, you know export. If you consider the import so China, Saudi Arabia so that is why we have to see that we have to export we have to improve our export with China, uh, Saudi Arabia so that we can have balance you know the trade and growth. These are the very very important aspects of uh, poverty elimination because these are part of the economic development process. I would like to summarize the impact of globalization on industrial sector you know industrial growth exceeded almost 10 percent in some years manufacturing growth exceeded 12 percent manufacturing of consumer durables and non durable have also recorded upswings telecommunications sec sectors with inflow of US dollar 405 million has registered the maximum growth Merchandise exports recorded a strong growth. Automot uh, automotive, you know, industry achieved a growth rate of over 20 percent in 2006-7. Uh, the biotechnology industry witnessed another growth. Uh, US dollar of 47 billion Indian textile industry, you know, grew. US dollar 600. Uh, 6.4 billion Indian retail industry grew over 20% uh, annually. The robust pharmaceutical you know, uh, market in India ranks fourth worldwide and is cross business worth uh, 100,000 uh, know, crore. 
in formulation and bulk drug production in 2010. But one important challenge I think we have to tackle child labor. We have many types of child labor in our country. These child uh, labor indicate the status of poverty in our country. You can see children in plantation and farms, children in mining and quarrying industry, children in manufacturing company, children in unconditional worst farm. And sometimes this child labor continues to be the very important you know, constraints for exporting some items. Hope you will uh, might be knowing through media or various reports that time to time many country impose such restriction because of you know child la la labor involvement in some of our uh, production process and manufacturing process. So this aspect is a very very important for poverty eradication and we have to bring several innovative uh, steps for eradicating child labor in order to you know reduce poverty level in our country. Agriculture sector continues to be the very very important you know uh, uh, for raising living standards in our country, uh, elevating poverty, assuring food security, generating market for expansion of industry and services, making substantial contribution to the national economic growth. Now I would like to put before you here that FDI inflow during pre-liberalization period until 1990 and 91, before liberalization you can see. And we had some FDI inflow but very, very you know slow growth and uh, 1991 declined very substantially and that is why you know such FDI inflow you know low inflow force you know government to go for opening our economy and so you can see the fact sectors attracting highest FDI uh, equity flow in recent years the data is of June 2014 telecommunication attracted a very substantial you know service sectors followed by service sectors hotel and tourism then power sector then you know construction development township housing metrological industry automobile computer software and hardware these are such FDI inflow, you know, has been very, very important for removing poverty in our country. Now we have to see the regional picture, whether this inflow of FDI reaching to the different section of society and different region of India or not. Now you can see here. If you will see the number of approvals for uh, uh, then Maharashtra attracted initially substantially followed by Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Gujarat. These are the states where we have more industrial development. Now you can see sectors attracting the highest FDI inflow in current years you can see service sector, construction development, township, housing, built up infrastructure because Jawaharlal Nehru urban renewal mission and several other schemes you know uh, have been taken into consideration. So you can see here TMT you know like a technology, media and telecommunication, industry, business services, automotive, consumer goods. Most attractive city, if you will see Mumbai, Bengaluru, New Delhi, Chennai, Pune, Chandigarh, these are the all big city, attracted a lot of 
FDI. And so that is why poverty eradication continues to be surrounding to this city. What we need decentralizing you know economic activity to different part of the country so that you know poverty er er eradication should not be only limited to in a, a sporadic way in our country. You can see manufacturing, financial, uh, construction, these are the important outward. And so that is why here I would like to put before you FDI inflow uh, during the post liberalization period, you know, 90, after the 1990 and, you know, it was very slow until the 2003-04, but after 2003-04, very substantially increased. We have to consider the several economic determinants, resource, asset, raw materials, low cost and skill labor, skill labor, technological assets, reform, physical infrastructures, etc. And so that is why I would like to bring before you the some of the missing links where you know we have to remove the poverty. We have to diversify our economy and you can see the variety of you know a small scale industries and activity is starting at a very small scale level village and cottage industry in different part of the country. India is definitely developing in a much faster pace now than before but in spite of that it can be identified that development had taken place unevenly. And so we have to minimize the special regional differences, poverty reduction, trade liberalization, banking and insurance reform. Now you can see we have to focus on rural artisans. Lot of uh, uh, you know training uh, we have to give some you know uh, support you know we have to give we have to develop entrepreneurship in agro processing that is key to rural development so that we can re uh, remove the poverty medical team tourism traditional health practices in rural area is very very important particularly the himalayan states and the southern states attracting a lot of finally i would like to say that good economic governance is key to end poverty and sustainability so we have to bring openness, transparency and integrity, performance orientation, effective collaboration and then we can move in era of you know, direction which may be considered as sustainable development. Thank you. Welcome viewers, we are now going to see livelihood security. We have to examine various livelihood assets available in different part of the country. I would like to take examples from Himachal Pradesh and little bit from different part of the country and how these livelihood security assets can remove poverty in our country and then we can achieve sustainable development. Rural households engage in a diverse type of activity in order to generate income or in employment. These are the very, very important for livelihood security. The ability to pursue different livelihood strategy is dependent on the basic material and social, tangible and intangible assets. I would like to quote here Chambers and Conway, 1992. I quote, a livelihood comprises the capability, assets and activity required for means of living. So livelihood means means of living. And so 
I would like to put a very important word sustainable before livelihood which is commonly known as the capability asset including both materials and social resources for a means of living. A livelihood is sustainable when it can cope with and recover from stresses and shocks and maintain or enhance its capability and etc. both now and the future while not undermining the natural resource base in present context. This you know is a comprehensive definition coming from DFID of UK. They have been pioneers in this area of research. Now I would like to bring before you some small you know uh, uh, items which can be classified under the different sources of livelihood. Agriculture and horticulture, animal husbandry including dairy, fishing, poultry, a small industry, minor hydro project, forestry, tourism, hotels, temples, art and handicraft, shoe making, shawl, weaving, save different type of artisan activity, government sector and business, migrated labor, Chhattisgarh, uh, 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 you know, uh, household, you know, in different part of the country, you can see this. The particularly from underdeveloped area where we have more poverty, people migrate, you know, like Eastern Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha. They migrate to the some developed regions. Household industry like a stone cutting, traditional art and craft, rented rooms. Uh, even uh, uh, pickle making variety of vulnerability is a very important component of livelihood and when taken in account of the vulnerability contest in which they operate and the policy and institutions and processes around them households tend to develop the most appropriate strategy possible such strategies are complex in nature. It depends upon the type of assets available in the uh, region based on local resources. It is very important to understand the existing security and wealth to reduce vulnerability and poverty. Household, those household uh, you know, engage in such tasks, they move towards diversification, adaptation and migration. You can see here sustainable livelihood based on the DFID approach as I highlighted earlier that DFID has been a very important you know contributor initially for the livelihood you know a strategy all over the world. They identified livelihood assets including human, natural, financial, physical and social. Natural relates to land and water, biological resources. Human capital related to health, education, knowledge and skills. Physical capital, roads, power supply, water supply. Financial capital, credit, saving, economic assets. Social capital, relatives, affiliations, associations. And you can see they, they also identified DFID different type of vulnerability con context like socks, seasonality, trends and <coughs> they brought before us different type of policies, institutions and processes like law, cultural norms, organization at all levels, public, private, civil society, you know livelihood outcomes include sustainable use of resource use, income, well-being, reduced vulnerability, food security and a strategy can be examined through diversification, migration and adaptation. Dear viewers, I would like to put before you here our study area and most of the, our maps and the uh, empirical evidences I would like to bring from Himachal Pradesh. 
75 percent of population is where 75 percent of uh, population is dependent on agriculture. The people live in environment of instant physical, economic and social vulnerability which is both a cause of poverty and barrier to its removal. The characteristics, feature of mountain, high degree of fragility, marginality, uh, inaccessibility and so that is why these also limit our range of our livelihood options. I would like to bring here mountain slopes and livelihoods. Uh, uh, you know, here you can see mountain agriculture, mountain forest, high hilly area, also the snow and glaciers providing the water. Forests are the very, very important. We have the alpine forest, northern side. Then we have temperate region, you know, where you can find the lot of fruits cultivation and it, this region is considered is a very, very productive. Then we have the subtropical, tropical area and so this map shows the agroecological zones in Himachal Pradesh. We have glaciers and snow in the northern side, so very limited livelihood option available, but tourism may be a very important activity in the northern side. But in temperate zone, we have a very highly productive zone, particularly the fruit cultivation. This zone has a lot of also the livestock population, so animal husbandry. We have the forested area, many uh, watershed development projects have been undertaken where people can get lot of livelihood opportunity available in different region. Massive development has taken place in southern side particularly the growth of city and industrial development and so people are getting lot of opportunity in such region. Mountain resources is a very important attraction for tourists. You can see waterfall at Bhagsu North area, a snow bound and difficult area, disaster prone and earthquake floods and road accident is a important challenge for livelihood assets time to time during the monsoon time such extreme events used to bring lot of disastrous situation and so tourism even is uh, disrupted time to time during the monsoon time. Here you can see livelihood through tourism the uh, home stay, different type of the, the treatment, the medical tourism, cooking classes are also coming up. You can see a special wooden, you know, made items, materials, these all locally made, lot of people used to bring lot of innovations. You can find the skill development and such items attract attention of uh, tourists and local people get lot of benefit from most important aspects of green tourism or sustainable tourism is to provide benefit to the local people. So in this way people get benefit. You can see the art gallery. So, casing traditional art of Kangra, livelihood from temple tourism, as you know this region, a lot of people coming from Punjab, religious idols ready to for sale, you know many people from the uh, uh, many states of northern India, they uh, go during weekend, during the 
uh, winter or summer time and they used to bring a lot of the religious items you know for their own use but recent years we are getting lot of important threat coming from tourism with massive infrastructure development and building construction we are experiencing landslides we are experiencing uh, soil erosions rock falls in different part of himalaya now you can see this two tourist arrival at dhamsala town one example here i am taking even not only the domestic tourist but also the foreign tourist growth of vehicles you can see and so we are getting a lot of the pollution there is a say tourism destroy tourism so i think we have to move for creating such environment where we should have green tourism you can see the water generally people used to get the water supply from uh, different sectors and you can see the hospital because medical tourism hotels hostels nursing home restaurant these are using the more water you know traditionally we get water from natural springs now due to the uh, grazing deforestation and s- subsequently you know erosion used to bring sediment load to these water bodies and our springs are drying up you can see the agricultural terrace terrace agriculture that exist terrace farming at tapovan dhamsala area and the apart from various type of handicrafts you know people use their extra rooms for tourist home stay is very prominent in such regions people are growing also the off season vegetable off season vegetables uh, in the uh, even terrace and such products are getting lot of the profit they can bring lot of uh, you know uh, income and employment to the local people most import- important trend one can see in the farm of organic farming this is a very new initiative Organi- organic agriculture is a response to above condition for extensive use of fertilizers and other existing resources so now people are moving towards organic farming government has emphasized fast and inclusive growth especially in agriculture sector this is possible in the mountainous area so that the benefit of the Uh, uh, the growth percolates down to the most vulnerable section of society particularly the landless people marginal uh, small farmers scheduled caste scheduled tribes women and so on i would like to put here some important figures for achievements you can see this the physical target and achievement almost the same so very successful national vegetation initiatives are also coming up other components still yet to be developed but uh, particularly the lot of area very substantial proportion of area were satisfied under organic farming you can see here area under organic farming uh, area in hectare we have the more in the southern side more area and the uh, western side we have not much you know development of area under organic farming polling houses are coming up 
number of police houses you can see the uh, in different districts more more towards the northern side eastern side north and eastern side less in the western side it is very important pertinent to also mention sources of tibetan livelihood you know they are they have tourism particularly the lai lama temple handicrafts arts and craft thanga painting these are very famous tibetan medicine and the astrological institute is there dr dolma clinic dr yasi known for cancer treatment other small businesses are also there you know healing set centers tibetan healing centers are there you can see here how the tibetan medical uh, medicine prepared it rented village in dharamsala area they they are drying up uh, lot of medical uh, plant uh, is cultivated in that area and here you can see the tibetan outlet at bhagsunang so casing you know and then you know uh, the variety of other activity you know uh, they have undertaken particularly the you know selling the different type of the equipment buddha painting ready to be sold at bhagsuna uh, market area you know tibetan painter in a rented room here you can see this such paintings are very popular and even western tourist they come and buy and people get local people get uh, uh, very substantial income and also the some employment opportunity in this sector i would like to mention here the uh, hp mid himalayan watershed development project a very important institutional development has taken place in this area a uh, 15% share of outlay enhancement watershed management is very important part 60% share then enhancement of livelihood you know a community driven development program 50% and the project coordination 10% share and these uh, all projects are uh, you know located in mid himalayan region between you know 800 to 1800 you know uh, altitude for enhancing my, uh, mountain livelihood strategy you know paying 25000 poor families were uh, identified they identified livelihood for vulnerable groups livelihood support particularly for agri business you know so conservation of forest and then you know uh, also the peace culture were developed many community leaders ngos working in this uh, uh, livelihood sectors uh, these are the very important organizations here i would like to mention asa swarg cord him children and development organization society for animal and human welfare sani seva sadan gram shiksha san- sanchar samiti kangra mahila sabha new chomunda you know pkl society for rural development ma sarasvati society these are the variety of you know this region also uh, very famous for religious so you can find the lot of the economic activity livelihood projects uh, at cord here you can see that the how they are involving the self help groups total 1547 self help groups were involved this Uh, 21930 group members were there total villages 640 villages these are the all uh, bank loan uh, group saving repayments all this is the from court center how you can see this the they are giving the training and uh, particularly the women are being trained so because many women are uh, unskilled you know they are they are working in the all skilled laborers on educated so in this way community based livelihood you know farm and allied sectors you know they are trying to involve at the end i would like to you know mention about the analysis of livelihood capital 
how academically we can uh, you know examine these aspects i supervise the one two important you know research work phd work and you can see we identified a different type of resource regions like you see natural capital you can see land farms altitude slope forest temperature rainfall wasteland soils agroecological zones are there if you consider the physical capital then we have roads drinking water electricity educational infrastructure medical infrastructure communication facility you know financial capital if you see agricultural cooperative society non agricultural cooperative society rural banks credit deposit ratio if you consider the human capital then population density literacy you know health can be also examined here i would like to mention here that the most of the villages and the small you know block headquarters are having the women organizations like a mahila mandals so people are organizing themselves and uh, many uh, they had uh, you know many women groups they are di- diversifying activity vutico i would like to mention about the vutico weavers association you know initially they started with the handicraft but you know uh, 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 now you uh, know long you know ago they started with the just planting the tree protecting the tree but now they are di- diversifying their ec- uh, economic activity and they they are involved now for variety of handicraft you know activity and they are looking after also the marketing work so this is a very very important development few thing here i would like to mention that the uh, physical capitals you know for that we identified like a road density village connectivity to roads household with drinking water facility household with toilet household with electricity number of post many data statistics you can get from the census so it is possible to examine and we can prioritize the problem it is very important for us for eradicating poverty for bringing development prioritizing the problem and in this way we can prioritize the problem and then policy makers can bring variety of livelihood projects in that area according to resources available in that region so you can see here like population density literacy rate we have uh, taken because very very important these all have been you know uh, c- uh, combined here you can see physical capital financial capital human capital total average and then resource on basis of resource potential the we prioritize like a high area where you can find the kangra mandi and simla in himachal pradesh medium like hamirpur sirmor chamba solan una low we have bilaspur kinnor kullu lahul and aspiti so what here i would like to you know propose that we have to take the low potential area for bringing more livelihood options more income and employment generating activity because they are uh, facing more problem in even uh, they are facing the lot of the uh, climate extremes here also within also uh, district we try to prioritize the problem like very high high moderate low and very low take into consideration of you can take the tehsil you can consider the block you know these can be examined so you can see here now finally i would like to conclude that the government play an important role in providing a social protection floor to the citizen to increase income and assets enhance capability and ensure access to entitlements and claims indian key programs include national rural livelihood mission any policy intervention that impact the capacity of poor to earn a living and the wider economic well being of the individual and family through variety of livelihood policy agricultural diversification and timely provision of seeds and fertilizer must be promoted 
crop diversification, not only agricultural diversification, but crop diversification is very important. Weather based crop insurance scheme, land in, in change should be controlled, and local habit of the wild animal, uh, uh, habitat of the, uh, animal should be preserved. Using the local workforce, water tank should be built in higher reaches to provide the drinking water. Better implementation of Manrega is required to improve the availability of basic infrastructure like road and street lights. Participatory forest management approach should be, and I would just I gave example of the Himalayan, mid Himalayan uh, project. Exotic livestock breed, very important. Marketing cooperatives of fruits, off season vegetables, and uh, flower growing farmers need to be encouraged. Finally, sustainable tourism and medical tourism need to be promoted. Thank you very much. Thank on, you very much. On that note, I would like to thank sir for this very enriching discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.